Hello to the Juice Guru Rewind and uh, the membership group if you're uh, making your way in right now. I'm Steve Prusak and we're going through audio today. I've got uh, Beverly Lynn Bennett here. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Steve. We're going through the power. Hi. I'm actually going to put some slides up and things that are relating to related to what we were talking about, but uh, just so people have a little bit of a visual. Um, what? Someone's in the chat room. One sec. Oh, hello, Diane. Okay. Glad you were able to make it. And um, anyone watching on the replay, and I'm going to actually stream this into the Facebook group now, too. So okay. let, me, let me go ahead and do that. And uh, I should ask Beverly, where are you hanging out from? I live in Eugene, Oregon. Oh, well, it's a plant-based, friendly town there, isn't it? Yes, yes. I always say, yeah, I, feel, I actually moved here from Ohio to be in a more veg-friendly place. You know, yeah, I live in the middle of the Willamette Valley where they grow all the great organic produce and grow all the great grapes for all the great wine that we're known for. Oh, nice. So, How long have you know, been out great, there? Uh, about uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 2002 I moved out. We moved out here. Sight unseen and we're happy we live here. Okay, we're going to go live Much on better. Facebook, and we'll say hi to that community, and then we'll start recording and getting the show done. So thank you again for being here. I'm, I'm excited. I've seen your name on so many books. It's nice to finally meet you. Oh, nice to meet you, too. Okay. So thank you again for being here. All right. Well, that's, that echo means we're out live on Facebook, and, uh, and if you're joining us on Facebook, welcome. This is going to be uh, an interesting session. <laughs> um, every, I'm just, it's funny. I'm just looking at it. We're, you're going to see some slides because we're not face-to-face, -face, but you're going to hear the audio. And I'm here with Beverly Lynn Bennett. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Steve. How I'm really you? excited to have you. She's the author of several books, um, 15 exactly, to be, right? To be exact. Um, yep, yep, 15. And, and the most recent anti-inflammatory foods and recipes, vegan sex, vegans do it better, dump your meds and jump in bed, and vegan for one. We're going to talk about um, inflammation and uh, chronic inflammation, things like that on this show so we can identify how, what inflammation is, how we can lower our inflammation by what we eat, and so much more. So if you're tuning in, you're in the right place at the right time, thank you for being here. And if you've got questions, just go ahead and type them in the chat box if you're behind the scenes with us. Hi, Wesley. I see you made it. Thank you for joining. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can type them in the chat box. Um, if you're part of the Juice Guru Rewind, you can come on live on video if you like, just by raising your hand at the end of the interview. And if you're on Facebook, go ahead and type in below where you're hanging out from. And hello, I see Rose and Don and Paul with us right now on Facebook um, that they've joined the chat. And I'm sure that's going to increase as we go on. Um, so, this is going to be fun, Beverly. That's now all that tech stuff's out of the way, so now we can have yeah. some fun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Cool. I don't understand all that stuff because, as I said, I'm not really a social media person. I'm kind of an old school kind of person, even though I'm only fifty. <laughs> yeah. No. I like face to face uh, interactions and stuff, so I don't right. do all those things but, that most people do in my line of work. But so. No, and that's actually that's a good, kind of exciting. It, 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 you know, all this social media, all this stuff is distracting us from the real things in life, right? You know what I mean? Yes, exactly, exactly. All right, yeah. so let's dive right into it, and we're going to start now. Okay. This, epi this episode of Juice Guru Radio is brought to you by Try Best, making healthy living easy, and the Juice Guru Rewind at JuiceGuruRewind.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve. On today's show, we've got Beverly Lynn Bennett. She's a prolific author, vegan chef, and animal advocate, passionate about showing how easy, delicious, and healthful it is to live and eat more plant-based. You're going to find out all about it on this show. So get some water, some tea, some juice, and we'll be back right after this with Beverly Lynn Bennett. And hello, welcome back. We're here with Beverly Lynn Bennett. Her latest books, I mean, she's so prolific. She's got 15 books in 15 years. Uh, this year alone, anti-inflammatory foods and recipes, uh, vegan sex, vegans do it better, dump your meds and jump in bed, and vegan for one. Let's welcome to the show right now, Beverly Lynn Bennett. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for being here, Beverly. It's so funny the way I, I, I just had to get the vegan sex title out, right, and sound professional yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the cover is very funny. <laughs> you know, all these books and so little time. How do you do it? 
Uh, I just constantly am put around the kitchen. I, I love being in the kitchen, and uh, luckily I have a husband who lo- is vegan also, and he just loves to eat. So I'm just always creating recipes, writing things down, you know, if I hit on something that works really well, and I just love experimenting. Well, it's interesting. You've been eating this rabbit food for a long time now. How long now? Yeah. Have you been, how long have you been a rabbit? Uh, uh, at least, I always tell people more than half my uh, life. Uh, when I was 16, my husband and I both tried vegetarianism. He stuck with it. Uh, it was high school in the 80s, a little tough. But by 18, uh, we both were vegetarian for good, and we went vegan soon after we graduated from college. So I was like almost 30 years. We're oh, you're, you're with your year anniversary. Oh, you're <laughs> with your you're with your like you're with your high school sweetheart too. Yes. <laughs> oh well, wow. We together, freshman year of college, I'll say, but oh, we met in high school. We went to the same high school. We went to the same college. You know, started commuting. Friends Love it. Turned into better things. You know. Yeah. Love it. I, and, and I can I'm see lucky a, that he's vegan. <laughs> I'm lucky he's vegan. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like he took the journey with you. So tell us about that. So what really um, made you transition? I mean, especially in the eighties, it wasn't the most popular thing. Now it's, you know, plant-based diet. It's, it's the latest rave rage. Right. Um, right. What, what, what was it back then that, that um, made you migrate that direction? Well, we're, luckily for both of us, it was the same thing. We both had the animal epiphany. We both, looked at an animal and had the same thought, like, they're no different than I am. His was that he was about to eat dinner and he was petting his dog and he realized that the dog's leg looked like the leg that was on his plate and he didn't want to eat it anymore. Mine was that uh, when I was growing up, um, I come from a long line of farmers. I was in an Amish farm with my grandparents and I was, I witnessed some Amish children uh, step on a little chick and kill it and not care. So I ran out to the corral and there was a cow and a cow has brown eyes like I did. And we both looked at each other in the eye and it, it, I was crying and it nuzzled me. And I just, I had this most amazing moment with an, with an animal after a horrific moment that I no longer wanted to drink milk. I no longer wanted to eat, you know, animals, but you know, my parents weren't that into it, but uh, when I was, did synchronized swimming, I had a coach that was a vegetarian, and she turned me on to it, and it uh, stuck with it, and I don't regret it one bit. So I always say I'm an ethical vegan first, uh, and I just benefit from eating great food. But it's all about the animals for me. Right, so the, it's interesting because some people get into healthier living for you know different reasons is it for compassion is it for your health or you know the environment there's lots of implications for this right yes oh yeah for me yeah it's it's gone through all those phases you know yeah it started with the animals and then i had the health benefits because i come from a a long line of uh we'll say well-rounded irish people (laughs) and so (laughs) i was like almost 200 pounds (laughs) when i was 18 and uh, I went vegetarian, I dropped 50. When I went vegan, I dropped another 25. And now I just said, I, I just turned 50 this year, and I'm only uh, 15 pounds heavier than I ever was at my skinniest in my adult life. And that's, you know, that's not too bad considering I have a, a major injury that limits uh, the types of exercises I can do. Mm-hmm. And I do, as you said, 15 books in 15 years, and I do all my own test testing. So, especially almond flour, that piled on 15 pounds in four months you know going through 40 pounds of almond flour uh you <laughs> kind of put on the pound but so, i got that off in the last year so, so we're going to kind of focus in on your book anti-inflammatory foods and recipes and let's talk about yeah. uh let's let's define it what is inflammation it's, it's kind of uh, ironic that inflammation is like actually like the cause or like a consequence of every little thing that could happen to you, whether it's an injury, an infection, or a disease. It's kind of like um, something like, you know, you know if you, you, you stub your toe or you prick your finger or you have a, a virus, those are actually types of inflammation. And most people don't like realize that. And, you know, some people um, have symptoms ongoing that are really like me, I, mine's from an injury uh, that I have to deal with uh, inflammation on a daily basis because uh, I have a severe back injury um, that I deal with. And for other people, it's just, you know, like they could even have allergies. And that's technically a, a type of inflammation affecting your, your different, uh, your eyes, your lungs, you know, your throat. Um, it's, it's really becoming a, a, the new buzz topic because a lot of mm-hmm. symptoms people didn't like put together. You know, like you, it's like connecting the dots yourself. Sometimes you think you have 
this, this, and this, and you don't always put it all together. Well, same thing. If you don't put it together and you don't tell your doctor, <laughs> they might not put it together either. So um, it's kind of like coming into uh, its own. More people are discussing it as being causes of many illnesses. And um, it's kind of like exciting for people like me that, that try to, to take uh, control of their own health and heal themselves through the way they eat and the way they live. So I know they talk about two different kinds. There's acute and chronic. Yeah. Let's define right. them both for those new to this idea. Okay. Yeah. Acute would just be like, you know, like redness, heat, uh, swelling, pain, of course. Um, and then that your, your body kind of, it's kind of like it, it, if an invader comes into your body, your body like goes to work trying to fight it off. And so it tries mm -hmm. to deal with those, all those symptoms. And if, they, if it heals itself really quickly, if it's just something that's very minor, that's acute. But if it keeps lingering on and on and on, that's more chronic. You know, it has the same symptoms, but chronic inflammation doesn't go away. And some people, like I said, some people have, like me, the, the pain goes ups and downs from day to day, week to week. And other people, it could be just like slowly just laying dormant, just little bitty things, and they might not even realize it. Like I said, putting the dots together, that that's actually what their problem is. Because it does mm. cause, it is actually being, uh, you know, the more they're studying it, the more they're realizing that it actually causes a lot of illnesses that they that people weren't thinking of that, you know. It's like kind of an exciting time in medicine, how much things have evolved just in my own lifetime. Like, it's how more and more people are doing independent research instead of just take, taking what someone says for granted, they're doing their own research. And find, so more and more studies are being done and more, especially more and more plant-based studies for people like us that are vegan. <laughs> you know, it used to always just be, uh, people are always, you know, popping a pill or, you know, following uh, a certain, you got to eat more fish oil and things like that. And, or you need animal products. And that is becoming more and more, um, counteracted by the plant-based community and plant-based doctors and nutritionists pointing out, no, actually a lot of that kind of way of eating actually could lead to disease, lead to illnesses. Um, so I find that very interesting. Yeah. And so uh, definitely. So if someone's listening and they, they think maybe I have chronic inflammation, what are some of the symptoms that, what else might they be experiencing to identify that and, and some of the other causes? But, um, as I said, you know, um, well, I think there's two phases. Like there's the, the pro-inflammatory pro and there's the anti-inflammatory. And usually pro usually is a good thing and anti is bad, but actually it's the reverse when it comes to this uh, in your body. Right. So when you have just pro-inflammatory, that would be like pain, inching, redness, uh, heat, swelling. Um, and so, you know, that, that uh, your body, you know, deals with that and it tries to shut that all down. And that's when the pro, the anti-inflammatory process kicks in. It tries to reverse the pro-inflammatory, and it tries to return your body to being more in its normal state of ease, I guess you could say. Um, and like, it's, um, so then, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. And that's why I, I um, then I was amazed to learn that uh, anti-inflammatory things are actually led to uh, essential fatty acids. Like the way you eat. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, like uh, most modern diets and Western diets, we tend to uh, rely on a lot more processed foods instead of eating simply like our ancestors did, you know, 50, even 100 years ago. You know, everything pretty much you grew it yourself or, or, or you, your neighbor did, and that's what you ate. So then, like, omega 3s and 6s were more in a balanced state. But now people tend to eat more omega 6s. Then omega threes and omega sixes actually increase inflammation and omega threes curtail it, which was something I found totally, totally uh, fascinating when I was uh, learning more about for this book, because um, I didn't even like think about that. The like the types of foods that I, I knew certain things were good for inflammation, but I had no idea how many foods were good for inflammation and how many foods could cause problems for somebody. And yeah, I, let, I, I let, let's I identify some of that. To that myself. Let's you know, identify so, some um, of that. Let's let's identify some of the foods that are good for inflammation and the types of foods people should avoid to uh, limit and decrease this. Right. Okay. So you want to, um, you want, like I said, you want to eat things that are more omega three fatty acids or, or, or lower in omega sixes or no omega sixes at all. If you have an extreme injury, you know, if you've broken your back or something like that. Um, so. 
for me, the things that I find the easiest to incorporate into my diet are things like nuts and seeds that are high in omega threes, which are your like mm. some of the things that I love, like almonds, cashews, uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, um, pistachios, walnuts. Um, and then on the flip side, the ones that are higher in omega sixes are some of my favorites too. So I've learned to limit these because I realized I was eating some of these all the almost like on a daily basis. And that's why sometimes my I would have more swelling, especially if I traveled, because uh, I always became, you know, um, I always bring my own food when I travel. <laughs> you know, as, as a vegan, you want to make sure you eat well when you're traveling, bring you a lot of your own food. But the, the, the nuts and seeds that are high in omega-6s, which could cause some people some problems, are things like pecans and uh, pine nuts and pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and sesame seeds, all things that I tend to use as well. Um, then I also learned too that I was actually also using a lot of high anti, uh, high omega-6 oils, which in my, in my baking, like sunflower and safflower. But I, now I've switched to using more, going back to what I used to do, I used to always just use organic ol uh, olive oil, and people thought that was weird in baked goods and cakes especially. But now I realized I was actually on the right track. So I use more olive oil and coconut oil and things like that in my baking. And then uh, I tend to use um, things like the, the hemp oil, the flax oil, and walnut oil for when I'm making dressings or uh, raw dishes, or if I just want to like uh, put a little bit of a drizzle on something just as a little garnish. Um, I tend to do that I love my toasted sesame oil, so I tend to do that <laughs> more often with that one as well, even though that one has omega-6s. That one's a little thing that's a little hard for me to uh, deal with. Um, then it, the easy thing when it comes to produce, you want to eat the rainbow. Uh, the more colors and vibrant colors of fruits and vegetables you eat, the, the more uh, phytochemicals they have. And they found that um, a lot of the phytochemicals like uh, carotenoids, which are in um, green, orange, and red uh, fruits and vegetables, and flavonoids, which are like in your berries, uh, polyphenols also in berries and uh, grapes and uh, green tea, and then uh, see, terpenes, which are in cherries and citrus fruits. And then there's spices uh, and herbs that are also beneficial, like uh, black pepper and turmeric, which and ginger, which I try to have on a daily basis because those those seem to work really well for me, um, with especially with keeping uh, swelling down and um, inflammation uh, in my uh, back and joint in my hips. Um, things like basil and cilantro and pretty much like and then uh, rosemary, the very fragrant herbals. And the very warming spices, so your your ginger, your cinnamon, and at this time of the year, it's really easy because those are a lot of the uh, herbs and spices that people tend to use in the fall and the winter to flavor their their holiday meals and things. You know, you tend to see those things pop up over and over. Um, oh, but uh, one thing though, uh, fruits and vegetable wise, that some people might have a problem with is uh, things in the nightshade family. For some mm -hmm. people, that can cause uh, arthritis and inflammation. Um, so that's like in tomatoes and peppers and uh, eggplant. But for me, I those haven't been a problem. Um, I actually get benefit from when I eat spicy peppers, especially. So I try to, I often garnish my food at least every other day with some kind of like a hot pepper uh, chili flake or some hot sauce or something like that. Because for me, the, the, the spicy food actually tends to help my swelling issues. Mm -hmm. um, then you also, uh, some people, you definitely want to avoid trans fats, no matter what. <laughs> and you also uh, should watch uh, your caffeine intake and your alcohol intake. So uh, for people that do like to drink, like myself, uh, you always got your, your wine. You got Reservatol in uh, your red wine, which does have some benefits from people. And you can have a couple glasses a day, and it shouldn't cause you too many problems. Uh, of course, you want to, like most people, you want to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, because, you know, for, that's less stress on your uh, joints um, if you're, you're not pecking on the pounds there. And then um, I also uh, discovered that fermented foods, which I already personally love eating, like sauerkraut and pickles and uh, mm. things like that, or have the probiotics, which are good for your digestion, and improved digestion helps so many things within the body, as I'm sure mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
What about Definitely. some of no. the, and I do want to get back to your list while you've yeah. really, you've got it amazing. Um, and so much information this, and I hope everyone's got their notepad out. I'll give you a minute to grab your, <laughs> your, <laughs> your notepad, or you can pick up the book. The name of the book is anti-inflammatory foods and recipes. It's available on Amazon bookstores uh, worldwide. Isn't that right, Beverly Lim? Yeah. 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 So, you know, that's you know the other choice you can take notes or you can get the book no well the book's got lots of recipes yeah. and things and and beverly's going to share more of that with you um but what i was going to ask was about so you're talking about probiotics and um you know fermented foods what about and there were two things what about the um the new like there's some plant-based yogurts now coconut yogurt and almond yogurt yeah. things like that and also, yes, actually, a lot of those are made here in Eugene. <laughs> we have so delicious and this almond, uh, another almond company. I can't think what their name is. That's based out uh -huh. here. Yeah, we have a lot of companies out of Eugene. If people don't know, that are national companies. Uh, Love it. We're in, in Oregon in general. <laughs> That's why I'm very, very lucky when I go to the, the veg fest. And, stuff. And, and what about like um, the probiotic drinks, like Cavitas? That's my new favorite. Have you have you tried these probiotic drinks that have these different um, pro uh, bacteria's in them? And do you recommend uh, I have not them? Had, I have not had that, but I'm a big fan of kombucha, which is made, you know, here. And I'm a big fan of kimchi and uh, yes. sauerkraut and pickles. And I actually make those. I don't make my own kombucha because somebody I, I used to work with actually has a company here in Eugene. So I drink theirs. Um, but yeah, for it's kind of like a, it's like an old school thing that's come back into vogue, you know. Like our our a lot of our relatives that are people that are from Europe, their families grew up having a lot of fermented foods, and then it kind of like fell along the wayside, except for pickles. Um, and now it's coming back into to vogue, like people are realizing. Yeah, it, it, I, I as a foodie, I just really get excited by the new trends in food when things like. Things that I already already enjoyed eating or drinking, find uh -huh. out that they have some kind of a benefit. <laughs> that that really gets me excited, you know. And and uh, I love sharing that kind of stuff with other people. Yeah, when I no, find out of that. This is but really I'm exciting. I have seen that that beverage that you're talking about in the stores, uh, and I am a big fan of the the coconut yogurts and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and almond ones. And I've had some really really good ones especially uh, there's new products every day. So I would always tell yeah, people, if you can't find the, it one store, go to another store or go online. Right. You'll be surprised what you can find. Yeah. The Kavitas I like, they don't add sugar to it. So it's naturally sweetened oh, awesome. and it's, it's, it's oh, delicious yeah. and lots of interesting flavors. So you were, before I got excited about probiotics there, you were listing some of the other anti-inflammatory foods. Did you want to get back to, to some of those that were on your top list? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, yeah. You see, you know, of course, like for vegans, easy. You want to eat things that have high protein. Even though the protein thing gets to me as, as a vegan, that people, I love telling you, people, there's protein in all plant foods. <laughs> right. you know, it's kind of like a myth perpetuated that there's plant. You know, uh, and I just heard uh, Milton Mill say on something recently that. That, that all animals get their protein from the plants that they eat. And they, it's like, oh, I can't wait to say that one. <laughs> you know, when people always come up and ask you where you get your protein. And right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you want to eat your beans and lentils and uh, peas and uh, the more simple types of uh, soy-based foods like edamame, tofu, and tempeh versus the, um, the overly processed um, products. You can't eat some of those um, transitional meatless meats products. And, you know, from time to time, I buy those. You know, when I'm visiting family, it's easier. But always read the labels because some are really great and some have some questionable ingredients. We'll just, you know, if you don't understand what the ingredient is, maybe you shouldn't buy it. Uh, so, yeah, you, want, you definitely want to avoid eating too many refined products, refined flours, refined sugars, refined carbohydrates, avoid the trans fats. Uh, eat more high protein grains, um, such as like amaranth, barley, kamut, and oats. And actually, all the recipes, even though I don't personally have a problem uh, with uh, gluten, I do notice sometimes if I eat too much uh, wheat based products, especially things when I'm traveling that are not organic, um, I experience more symptoms. So I've I've been doing more gluten-free recipes, so all the recipes in the book are actually gluten-free, and they use either, um, I found out that steel, steel cut oats had more of the, uh, the nutrients intact, so I actually uh, recommend that you like pulverize the steel cut oats to make them into a flour, or I used almond flour or almond meal 
and then like the, the starches like arrowroot, cornstarch, and tapioca. So there isn't any wheat in it for somebody that wants to avoid uh, gluten. And actually, the mm-hmm. funniest thing is, too, is when I was in Portland, I was telling people, a lot of the anti-inflammatory foods that are beneficial are actually also aphrodisiacs, which also tied in with my other book. <laughs> but then you kind of get a, a double benefit there as well. <laughs> and so people like you chuckled at learning about that one. Um, well, what, that it yeah, ties into the other book, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, the, the vegan sex book, because I, I did all the um, aphrodisiac uh, chapter, and I did the uh, recipes that have aphrodisiac ingredients in that book. Oh, I, I, I've got to check that out. Actually, they didn't send me yeah. a copy of that. I want to check that one out. Oh. Um, so uh, what types of recipes do you include in this book? It covers it all, you know, from uh, beverages to breakfast, sauces, condiments, uh, a couple fermented food recipes, um, salad soups, dressings. I, mean, just, I try to do that with all my books. I try to cover, um, you know, from A to B to Z. And I try to have things for all different kinds of tastes, all different kinds of diets. I do follow moderation. I'm not an SOS. I don't. I do use sugar, oil, and salt. Um, I do try to keep uh, learning my new tricks to minimize or eliminate those kind of things. But I, I enjoy eating, so I um, purposely uh, try to eat. If I if I know I'm going to eat and something that's indulgent, I try to offset that by eating something really good the whole way up until that meal. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I do, I love making baking and do, making desserts, so I want to be able to enjoy that. Um, so that's the approach I do take with recipes. But I always tell people if it does have oil or something you don't like, uh, make it that the way it's written the first time. And then if you got a successful recipe, then the next time feel free to experiment. But especially with baking, follow the recipe as written. Because baking is like chemistry. And one thing mixed off, you could have something that's inedible. You could have something that overflows in your oven. You got a big mess to clean up. But always, you know, trust that somebody put some time and effort into creating the recipe. <laughs> that's the one thing I always, uh, I, I, I often laugh when people say, I, I changed this, this, and this, and why didn't it work? It's because you maybe because you changed this, this, and that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But I haven't gotten lots of good feedback from the recipes in the book, especially um, from friends and family that I've given the book to. And then mm-hmm. um, up in Portland, I just did Portland Veg Fest uh, last month, and everyone really enjoyed the recipes that I made there. Uh, I made um, uh, the festive wild rice, which is like a, which is really good for this time of the year. Was like a wild rice with sweet potatoes and, uh, you know, dried cranberries and uh, green onion, kind of like an alternative for people who didn't want to have a bread stuffing because you could eat it as a side. You could put it on as uh, on a salad. I said you could use it to stuff vegetables. You could use it to stuff your uh, your own seitan roast if you're going that ru- route, um, which I often mm. do. And then, um, and then I always like to make a, a – um, um, a colorful salad thing. Uh, so one of the, my favorite salads in this book was called eat the rainbow salad with a uh, curried sesame dressing because I like it's, I'm spoiled here that I have such great organic produce to pick from. So I take advantage of it. And so it had like everything from like rainbow chard, red kale, uh, dandelion, uh, red cabbage. And then it's got all you know, it's just carrots. It's got gold beef, uh, watermelon daikon, which people don't know. I always love showing people that one. Because it's, you know, it's the hot pink and the green. And uh, when I did that, do use that in spiralizing demos, because I wrote a spiralizing cookbook as well. People just are always like, wow, I had no idea there was other, you know, such things like that out there. I'm always like, yeah, wander around your, your, your produce section. You'll find some new things. And then, uh, then I tend to do either like uh, that one is a tahini-based dressing. Um, and if you didn't want to use tahini, you could use uh, sunflower. Or you could use not sunflower. You could use a, a, an almond uh, butter, I mean, and mm-hmm. uh, sometimes I do a citrus dressing. I like to eat lots of colorful salads like that, so I include that in the book. And then, uh, as I said, I did uh, some fermented recipes, and I really loved because I did a new version of a Reuben. Um, I love eating tempeh Reubens, and I also love eating collard rolls, which are, if people that don't know, it's like taking a raw collard leaf. And you use that like your, uh, instead of bread or a tortilla, and you make like a burrito. Uh, so it was oh. like a, it was with baked tempeh, and then I included um, a homemade sauerkraut recipe, a homemade garlic uh, dill pickles, and a homemade uh, chipotle almond mayo, which is for people that don't want soy, it's an almond paste. Um, and that, love that. Um, so you got Amazing. a little bit of spice, so, a little bit of savory, w- w- and uh, 
was awesome. These <laughs> are, so we've got, editor's like, who's going to want to make three components for that? I said, but if you make a lot of my recipes, people, <laughs> I, I tend to do piggybacks. So I, I use something in another recipe to show you the versatility of it because I often make things in, um, except for vegan for one, in things that make like four or more servings because I like, I like leftovers. Some people don't, but I appreciate leftovers. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes I, I, I come up with new recipes like, oh, that's how I turn that thing into something else. And so, like, that recipe has a lot of piggyback recipes, but uh, once she tasted it, she's like, okay, that's really good. <laughs> I never would have thought of eating that's... it, it uh, a Reuben in a collar roll. <laughs> I mean, it's exciting because they're creative and healthy and delicious recipes, which yes. is, is now possible. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, and what I want to talk a little about the holidays, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up here in the United States and some of the things you might, you know, suggest for the holidays and maybe you can share a typical day for you. And for those that don't have a lot of time in the kitchen, um, just some ideas on how we can start preparing more um, and, and making, you know, plant foods more a part of our life. And the last thing I wanted to mention was those in the audience that are following other diets, if they're not following a vegan diet, um, like flam- in, when we're talking about um, inflam- inflammation, I was going to say inflammatory, <laughs> inflammation, uh, <laughs> but th- we should, you know, for those, it is caused also by animal products too, right? Yes, yes, yes. It can be caused by animal products as well, for, especially um, because um, for one thing is that animal meat and dairy tend to have more omega-6s <laughs> than the more omega-3s. And mm-hmm. they also have uh, pathogenic microbes that actually trigger things, you know, like an immune response to your body. And then they also, I was, it had um, most animal, most people say most creatures, we'll say it that way, because <laughs> we are creatures as well, that eat uh, a meat-centered diet tend to have like a certain enzyme to help them break down uh, meat, the simple sugar in, in red meat. And we don't possess that. So we can't break it down. It's kind of like the lactose. You know, a lot of people are lactose intolerant, like myself. I'm, I'm now lactose intolerant because I haven't had dairy products. And I, I instantly get triggered. If I have dairy, I instantly feel that within 20 minutes, I feel symptoms. So for, that's the big indicator. If you, if you have a problem with any type of food, you should do an elimination diet. Stop eating that for a while, then put a little bit back in. See if you have a problem. If you don't have a problem, keep going. But if you do then you need to avoid that or you need a way to figure out how way to counteract that with something else. Mm -hmm. Um, I totally, I personally think that more people should go vegan. Um, but I'm all about people taking whatever steps works for them. I would say one day, do one meal, one day, one week, next thing you know, you're, you're doing it all. If you like it, you're doing it the whole time, but any little, even just one meal, you're saving life of some other animal <laughs> you're improving your own life it's kind of a win-win i say to people um yeah as it turns out and um yeah. with the holidays coming here and thanksgiving what are some of your suggestions yeah. and i mean i'm in los angeles and we've got lots of options but i'll be traveling to florida yeah. for the holidays so i'm i'm thinking right now uh, i'm gonna be with my parents yeah. and you know what are we yeah. gonna what are we gonna do for thanksgiving this year so what are some of your ideas well i always tell people uh for holiday meals you know, bring your own and bring in not just enough for yourself to eat, but bring enough to share because that's how a, a lot of my family, you know, is very curious about that don't know what I eat. You know, the ones that I only see at the holiday times or, or the family function. Um, they always want to try and same thing. My parents have parties and I go when I'm there, they always want to try whatever I make because they know that it's probably going to taste good. <laughs> so I always try to, you know, bust out something really good. Um, so you, yeah, you can't go wrong at this holiday definitely bring yourself, bring a colorful salad and don't just bring like the iceberg lettuce with the tomato and a cucumber slice. Bring a salad like <laughs> I described. It has lots of different colors and texture and some homemade dressing. That's not like something, you know, unless you, 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 because dressing, make, making dressing is really easy to make. Uh, but you know, I have bought store bought things when I travel in the pitch, but you know, make things from scratch for homemade and show people how delicious it is. Um, for the holidays, I, I always make, the same thing it's so easy to veganize things like the mashed potatoes uh the sweet potato casserole and i actually do include that in most of my books i always think of the holiday recipes 
and I try mm-hmm. to incorporate the side dishes. So there's a Brussels sprouts recipe in here because I absolutely love to make roasted Brussels sprouts. Uh, um, sweet potatoes, uh, I do different ways, or yams or butternut squash. You can swap those out for your sweet potatoes. Um, it's always cool to show, change it up and show people different kinds of produce. You know, everyone's used to, at least in my family, a lot of things came out of a can or a frozen bag for the, <laughs> for the Thanksgiving holiday. But I'll go and use my own yams, or I'll use the fresh butternut squash instead of using that can of yams. And then, you know, you can use coconut milk or coconut oil instead of butter or, uh, uh, as they call it now, I used to, just used to saying margarine, because like I said, I'm old school, uh, but now they call it vegan buttery spreads uh, or whatever spread if you want to use such things. Or you can use um, citrus juice instead. Uh, you can use maple syrup if you don't want to use sugar. Um, mm. I always just keep pushing the flavors. I, I always tell people, don't over salt it because you can't take it out. You can always add, but you can't take away. Uh, but don't be afraid to be uh, experiment with a lot of spices and fresh herbs. Fresh is best, especially this time of year. You can get a lot of good fresh rosemary and sage and thyme and parsley. And you won't believe how much better it'll taste when you use fresh like, things in like fresh nutmeg versus nutmeg that's been sitting in the uh, jar in the store for a year. Because, uh, you know, I... Mm-hmm. Personally, I use a lot of nutmeg, but I only buy a couple <laughs> at a time because <laughs> I like to grate them fresh. <laughs> you don't want it sitting in there from last year. Do you have your last herbs or spices from last year? Whenever you're going to do a big thing, get rid of those. Fresh, you want to keep things fresh. Um, buy in small quantities uh, for that. Uh, mm. I'd make a stuffed squash. Show people different, you know, that you don't always have to. I mean, I got no problem with eating a tofurkey because it's made here and that kind of thing. Um, but also it doesn't hurt to show people, yeah, you can make a stuffed squash. Um, one of the most memorable things I ever made for uh, people was a stuffed pumpkin. I got a real big pumpkin, and I stuffed it with a, a bread stuffing and wild rice and fruits. And that was like the big centerpiece <laughs> of the table. And the people I served so still talk about it <laughs> like 20-something year later. <laughs> I can't believe I, I never would have thought that you could stuff a pumpkin in it. Because they used to, you know, you just carve it up. It's make people think outside the box, go back to way, what it used to really be about. The holiday was more about celebrating the harvest. It wasn't about a turkey. It was about celebrating the harvest and all the abundance of the season. Same thing like in, in the winter holidays. It was all about the things that you preserve, that you might, all the good uh, produce that, that lingers in cold storage. So I think a lot of those things are, are what you find in the meals. Um, I would just tell people, don't be afraid to reinvent something you grew up eating to make it whatever the way you eat now push yourself plan ahead like you still got a couple weeks you can practice things out and there's in the internet you can find tons of recipes and books as i said i purposely try to always include back when because you and i both weren't wrote for the idiots guides i <laughs> that noticed one of that my first things. <laughs> I wrote vegan living and vegan cooking with my husband on the and uh-huh. the, I, we did a whole section on how to deal with people asking you questions, uh, the holidays and interactions and things, because that's something you're going to get quizzed on. Yeah, um, I, 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 people, I noticed that. That was exciting. You can have like, the oh, argument at the table, guys. but it's better to win over stump people through their stomach. <laughs> so I try to sway their mind by feeding them good food first, and then I bring in the conversation. After I love I've it. Open the door that way. <laughs> so basically, for you, it's it's not like a center dish and some sides around it. It's a bunch of just different um, side dishes in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look mm-hmm. at it like that. Yeah, you don't have to always have a big thing on the centerpiece. There's a lot of side dishes, right? Because yeah, we're you know what I'm going to be making, you know, and I try to change it up every year so that I like a certain standards but i do try to put a new spin on things every year because yeah you, you never know experimenting and new things come on the market that you, you, you have more and more produce especially here more and more organic things that i've never seen before uh, you know like uh people might not be familiar with broccoli or rob which is like a italian thing my husband's italian that i hadn't ever had and then it was like okay so then i had broccoli rob and then i started seeing the stores well now out here we have, so it's like the flowering, it's when you let the green start to bolt and you get a little bit of a floret of the, and then you have a green. So out here they also have kale rob, they have collard rob, uh, turnip rob. It, it, it blows my mind every time. I love going to the farmer's market and I encourage people to do that. I know they're ending in a lot of places that have seasonal ones. Um, but go and check out produce and look and look at what, 
grabs your attention, and that's the thing you should cook. What looks the freshest and the best and catches your attention. If you don't know how to make it, go online and somebody will tell you. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the one good thing I like. Even though I also I do appreciate that with the uh, the whole thing with online that if you don't know how to use something or you don't know what it is, you can go on there and find out. There's always somebody willing to share. Right there, we have to use technology. We don't have to let technology use us yeah, and get, yeah, and get exactly. caught into that web. The name of the book it's is exactly. The name of the book is Anti-Inflammatory Foods and Recipes Using the Power of Plant Foods to Heal and Prevent Arthritis, Cancer, Diabetes, Heart Disease, and Chronic Pain. The author is Beverly Lynn Bennett. That's the book we're talking about today. But she's got so many. And we're, I'd love to have you back, Beverly, because obviously maybe you know, you're like a, you have so much information. Maybe we can do another topic next time around. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So before we close out say, here, I do cover all that. Wait, I was going to say one thing. I, I am not a doctor, but I do cover the technical aspects. So that kind of information is in the book as well for people want to know the technical aspects of inflammation. I'm just more, I know more about the food because that's what, that's how I do is I said, I injured my back and I've learned to heal myself through food and daily exercise instead of having back surgery or popping pills on a daily basis for my pain. Right. And also, I mean, and you're a researcher on top of it. So yeah. like the, you, yeah. you're, it's all up to date, relevant information based on yeah. the latest studies. Yeah. Um, so Beverly, anything to say in closing before we uh, finish off any final words of advice for those um, who should just be consuming more foods like this to be healthier, anything that we didn't touch on that you want to share with the audience? Uh, I just want to say it's actually easier than you think um, that you, you might think it's hard to eat an anti-inflammatory food. A lot more anti-inflammatory foods. That's hard for my mouth to say. Um, <laughs> but it, 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 from the list, of, once I started going through the list of foods that we had, it was so much, it was apparent to me that I already eat several of those in the things that I make on a daily basis. So it's very easy to put up to like six or more anti-inflammatory ingredients in one recipe, especially like a, a smoothie or a juice. You know, that's like the simplest way, you know, liquid <laughs> into your yeah. body. You can actually throw a lot of things in at once and then it's easy on the go, you know, because people always think it's so hard to cook for yourself. And I'm like, you can invest it in the effort now and you'll have a better life later. That's how yeah. I look at it. And the, the website the again, effort. your website is veganchef.com, right? Is that the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah. 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 Okay. And we'll have a link to that, that up at juicegururadio.com. Beverly Lynn Bennett, thank you so much for being here. All the amazing work you're doing in the world to get this information out there for the last 15 years. Thank you for being on Juice Guru Radio. Oh, thanks for having me on, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fun. And I'm Steve Prusak, and we'll see you next time. No, that was a lot of fun. Okay. I'm going to go right. ahead and... And we've got some people backstage still. Any other, any final questions in there? I think we're all covered though. And um, I had asked everything that came in. So thank you again for your, for being here, Beverly Lynn. It's, I oh, call you Beverly you. Lynn, right? Well, I, I've used my full name because there's another food driver <laughs> that goes by Bev Bennett. So I use my full name to avoid, oh. she does meat. <laughs> oh, okay. I say, that's, that's you. I'm like, no, that's not me. So I use my full name. Well, that might have been I, I, what any version of it, and I'll answer. I, I probably should have asked that before we started the interview because then I could have called you Beverly instead of Beverly Lynn. A lot I think, of people right? do. A lot of people call me Beverly Lynn. Yeah, a lot of people do. Well, this is no Stephen Matt. Uh, this is Stephen Matthew. Thank you again for being here, Beverly Lynn. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks yeah. for having me. And, and I'm glad we're both in the complete idiots tribe. It's just really an yeah, honor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've written five. So. Oh yeah, you're you're way ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, way ahead. Hey, they paid you, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> that yeah, that they did. Back then. back then, they were like in advance. So, oh, sure, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. I didn't realize that was new for them. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Enjoy your holidays, and um, I'll send you a link to the show once it airs. Okay, that will be great, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great meeting that you. Good night. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. And let me just. Anyone in the community? Any final words? Um, I think a couple of you are still in here. Any other questions or anything? Before I close out, uh, I don't see anything. So I'm going to go ahead and 
say goodbye for now. Um, in the Juice Crew Rewind membership site, you'll see now under live events, you can get the calendar and know what's coming up. Um, so that's a great way to plan what I have in our calendar. So you can look in advance. We haven't done that. It's been kind of a little disorganized in that way. And that's going to be better for you. I, I know that. So you'll know what's coming in the Just Crew Rewind with our guests and shows and things like that. And um, I think that's it. And I don't see any final questions. If you're watching the replay, just type in below and I'll get your message. Or you can always click the Ask Steve button in the Juice Guru Rewind. We'll be telling you more about that and more. So thank you um, for being here and have a great evening.